The process of choosing a vice president has changed over the years. At first, the runner-up for president automatically became vice president. In 1804, the Constitution was amended and candidates ran as tickets. Party leaders chose the VP nominee in the ultimate blind date. It's only been since 1940 that the presidential nominee actually picked his number two, and it hasn't always been pretty. Here's Jeff Greenfield with the good, the bad, and the ugly. I accept the nomination of the Democratic Party. John Kennedy's choice of Senator Lyndon Johnson in 1960 was a shocker, but it may well have put Kennedy into the White House. It likely made the difference in Texas and helped him in South Carolina as well. I feel very privileged. When Ronald Reagan picked George H.W. Bush in 1980, it was a signal that he was willing to reach beyond his conservative base. Bill Clinton! Bill Clinton's choice of Al Gore in 1992 same age, same part of the country, helped underscore the message of youth and change. While George W. Bush added the experienced insider Dick Cheney in 2000. Some choices don't work out all that well. Richard Nixon reached for a new face when he chose Maryland Governor Spiro Agnew in 1968, but by campaign's end, Agnew had become a Democratic target. Walter Mondale looked to shake up the race in 1984 by picking a woman, Representative Geraldine Ferraro. But her husband's questionable real estate connections forced her and the ticket on the defensive for days. Well, I have uh, spent 12 years in the Congress. Senator Dan Quayle, George Bush's 1988 uh, choice, never uh, really recovered from his uh, deer-in-the-headlights appearance at his first press accepted. conference. Bush and Quayle won handily anyway. As for the costliest choice of all, when George McGovern's pick, Senator Tom Eagleton, acknowledged in 1972 that he'd been hospitalized for depression, it forced him off the ticket. He was replaced by Kennedy in-law, Sergeant Shriver, and it helped sink the McGovern campaign. What about this year's nominees? Well, Katie will likely know a lot more after tonight's debate.